Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you today? How are you feeling? We're fine, thank you. Fine, thank, fine. thank, thank you. you. That's good. That's really good. Today it is the last day of this week that we are going to have a session. Um, so we are going to continue with the topic that we were um, learning yesterday. We were talking about rules. So now we are going to end that topic. We are going to talk about um, quantity adverbs. We are going to talk about some uh, adverbs. And then we are going to study indirect questions. So we are going to start because of the time. So let me have this one here and I will share my screen with you. So here we are. This was the rule that we were um, learning yesterday. We are talking about articles and we are talking about count and non-count nouns. Estuvimos hablando de los nombres contables y no contables y las reglas. Nos quedamos por la número uno. Number one, use A or M to signal singular count nouns whose identity is not specified. Now we are going to talk about the second rule. Number two, it said that do not use an article with non-count nouns. Do not use an article with non-count nouns. <sighs> We're not going to use articles when we are using non-can nouns. Estamos hablando en la primera que utilizamos el, los artículos cuando estamos hablando de lo que son los eh, nombres contables en singular. In this case, we are not going to use the articles. En este caso, no <coughs> los vamos a utilizar porque estamos hablando de nombres no contables. And we have here some examples. Example, we have the incorrect one and the correct one. In the first one, we have the following um, sentence. Lily borrowed a sugar from the new neighbors. In this case, we have here the article A, a sugar, una azúcar, a sugar. It is not correct because it is a non-can noun. Es un nombre no contable porque no estamos hablando de la unidad. Estamos hablando del nombre general. Then, how can we correct this sentence? We can say, Lily borrow sugar from her new neighbors. Or we can say, Lily 
Sapporo, a cup of sugar. From her new neighbors. In this case, we can use the article because we are talking about um, something that we can count. Um, in the first one, Lily borrowed sugar, just the name in general, from her new neighbors. And in the second one, we are using a countable noun, cup. We can count the cups, one, two, three, four, five, etc. So those um, sentences are correct because we are using the articles in the correct way. Then we have another example that is incorrect. And it says, Robert gave Tina a terribly four day anniversary. Teacher, eh, what is the meaning borrow? Es como pedir prestado. Prestar. O, ajá, prestar. Es pedirle a otra persona que te entregue algo. Ok, thank you. Como decirle, prestame una taza de azúcar. Yes, borrow me a cup of um, sugar. Yes, es prestar, es pedir. In this case, it's not like, um, no es como préstame que la misma te la voy a regresar así como me la diste. Pero se utiliza esa expresión para pedir algo y obviamente nosotros tenemos que dar algo a cambio que tenga el valor significativo a lo que nos dieron. Now, Robert gave Tina a jewelry for the anniversary. In this case, it's incorrect because we are not talking um, about a specific piece of jewelry. We are talking about the general way. No estamos hablando de una pieza en específico de joyería. It's not like we are talking about rings or earrings or something like that. Just we are talking about the whole things. So in this case, to correct the sentence, we have to say, Robert, Gave Tina Chevrolet for their anniversary. Le dio joyería. Le dio joyas. In that case, is correct because we are not talking about one specific thing. We are talking about um, a lot of things. So we can use the uh, article in that case. Now, rule number three. Rule number three, use the signal. Must a specific nouns. Both countable and non count. In this case, we are using the to signal most specific uh, nouns. In this case, we can use it with countable and uncountable nouns. This is not like um, a number and a specific number. We can use it with both of them. So we have some examples here. Examples. Here we are. Um, the road, the road was closed due to construction. 
we are talking about the road. So we are using the, at the beginning of the sentence, the road was close due to construction. Then, tell me. What does that mean, the road? The road, el camino. Yeah. Ah, thank you. You're welcome. The professor provide, the professor provide feedback on the student's book. The professor. In the first one, we can say that we, um, we have a non-count noun because we need to know how many roads do we have. But in the second one, we have the countable noun that is professor. One professor, two professor, etc. So we are using the to um, signal most specific nouns. Number four, rule number four. Four. Do not use, in this case, is about not using the, do not use the before noun count or plural nouns. that mean in general. En la número tres decimos que utilizamos el da para eh, mostrar, ¿verdad? Eh, nombres específicos. But in the number four, it says do not use the before noun count or plural nouns that means in general. No vamos a usar esa the antes de los nombres que están en plural o que son no contables, que significan algo en general, no específico, sino en general. For example, the health. The health is very important to list. In this case, it is incorrect, this one. We are going to mark in red. The health is very important to list. It is not correct because the word health means something in general, nor something in specific. Así que en ese caso no podemos utilizar the porque la palabra salud es algo general, no es algo específico. A eso es lo que se refiere cuando dice que no utilicemos the with a noun found or plural nouns that means in general. The correct way to say this sentence is health is very important to place. Just like that, not using the at the beginning of the sentence. Another one is, I always leave the beach with the sun in my back. I always leave the beach with the sun in my back. This is incorrect because of this part, the sun. I always leave the beach with the sun in my back. Siempre dejo la playa con la arena en mi bolso. In that case, we can use the with sun because it's general, not a specific word. I always leave the beach with 
sand in my bag. Just like that. Now, I have something for you. I have some exercises. I have an image with some sentences. I will send the worksheet to the chat and you have to read the sentences that are in the image and then you have to find the mistakes and correct them. Voy a mandar un ejercicio al grupo with 16 uh, sentences and you have to read them, tienen que leerlas, then you have to find the mistake. Luego van a encontrar el error en la oración. And we are talking about uh, a, an, and the. Estamos hablando de los mismos, de los artículos, a, an, and the. So you are going to read them. Then you are going to find the mistake. And at the end, you have to correct them. Lo van a corregir. Si ustedes encuentran el, el error, van a corregir ese error. Then I will ask you or some of you to read the sentence, the one that is incorrect and the second one that is correct. Después de que terminemos de arreglar nuestras oraciones, voy a escoger algunos de ustedes para que lean la oración que está incorrecta y luego la corrección que ustedes le hicieron a esas oraciones. So I'm going to send you the image right now to the group there you are that's the image there are 16 and you have two um sentences that are just corrected number one they have new car and it appears an A, they have a new car. Then the second one is correct. Did she order coffee at the restaurant? That is correct. La número uno y la número dos ya se corrigieron. So you have to read from number three to number 16. Tienen que leer desde la número tres hasta la número 16.
escuchar una pregunta. Tell me. Algunas de las oraciones no necesitan cambios, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Porque me, sal, me aparece que están correctas, entonces por eso no, no las he cambiado. That's correct. Some of, them, uh -huh, some of them are just correct. So you don't have to change anything. I finished. Okay, good. A couple of minutes more and I am going to choose some of you to read the sentence. Teacher, uh, okay. do you do you write a uh, right sentence, right? Right. Okay. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Excuse me. In the in the fifteen, it will be. A, is there any sugar in my team? Fifteen. Sorry. Is there any sugar in my team? Is there a sugar in my team? Is there sugar in my tea? Mm. Without the a. What is the correct? Because I put a, a, is there any sugar or some sugar? Um, just uh, no. That's that's good. But in this case, you have to um, because just not write uh, the a. Okay. Because any a. is to make question. Mm -hmm. Is there any sugar in my tea? Yes, you can you can write it like that, but in this case, you are just going to eliminate the word a. Is okay. there sugar in my tea? In the in the thirteen, uh, I put uh, I will I will meet him in an hour. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And 14, uh, where can I buy a furniture? Oh, no. Uh, where can I furniture. buy? Mm, yes, but in this case, it is correct like that. Where can I buy furniture? Okay. Mm -hmm. In the 15, I, I, uh, I have written. Uh, she always carries uh, an umbrella with her. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. And the sixteen. I just I just saw a bird. Good. That's good. Yes. Correct. Okay. So let um, me see. Tell me. In the in the twelve, I don't know. Well, let's see. Ah, okay, and in twelve. Ah, in the twelve, I don't know. Canada is a big country. Canada I, is I don't know a big country. Can I do. It's correct. It's correct. Yeah. The, the sentences is correct. Yes. Okay. Canada is a big, a big country. Un país grande. Country. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the team, uh, did you have a good time on your holiday? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Do you have? Is, did you have a good time? It's, it's correct. Yes. It's correct. Okay. Yes. Did you have a good? Mm -hmm. 
Mm, okay. Uh, what other sense, sentences do we have to work? Only, only 11 ahead. There are 16. Oh, 10 uh -huh. ahead. Okay. Uh, in that case, I have finished. Yes, this is the okay. first exercise. We have another one, but in the other exercise, it's about indirect question, questions, and we are going to work in um, a document, like we are writing the sentences in, in the moment. So, okay, um, okay. Mm -hmm. so this is the first one, and then we are going to do another one, but let me see. We have Excuse some me, uh, tell uh, me. teacher. Tell me. Uh, I have a question with the platform in the in the topic uh, number three uh, dot five. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't put the answer that say uh, my new house doesn't have. I don't know what is the answer. Let me see. I, I was trying with several topics like. Okay. Uh, too many, too much, less, uh, fewer, enough, and more. I never, I, I, anyone. Number three. I don't know. Yes, number three. 3.5, The elaboration dice, my new house doesn't have space as my old house. Eh, le puse varias respuestas y no me dio. Y es la única que me falló. My new house doesn't have a space as my old house. That one. Yes. Sí. And that puse... is as much or eh, with a capital letter. Si es, la respuesta es as much, pero el, lo pueden probar con minúscula o con mayúscula. O poniéndole punto. As much. As much. Ah, ok. Thank you. As much. As much. Ok, thank you. Hmm? Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So, let's see. In the sentences, number four, Patricia, can you read the sentence number four? Do you still use the phone that you bought? Oh, good. Do you still use the phone that you brought, that you bought? Good, thank you. Patricia, tell me a name. Amilcar. Amilcar. Hello. Number I'm five. With... <laughs> Number, oh sure. my God. Number five. Yes. Uh... Oh no. My sure. cup just fell on the floor. Oh, good. My cup just uh, the... fell on the floor. It mm -hmm. fell on the mm -hmm. floor. Fell on the floor. So that's semi cayó. Yes, someone okay. is wanted to say something. I hear someone talking. Who was that? Escuché que alguien hablaba. Yes, teacher, me. Tell me, Roberto. She can, she can repeat it again the number four. Number four. Do you still use yeah. the, 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 the phone? The phone. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Amilcar, tell me a name. Name? Yes. Of your, uh, can we say classmates? One of the participants in the session. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Didn't understand. Uh, okay. Uh, Maria Jose? 
María José. <laughs> yes, number six. That was an easy question. question. Good. That was an easy question for real. She was my she was my classmate in the last course. Oh, that's good. Yes. So she's my friend. <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> that you have friends in this course. So Maria Jose, tell me a name. Fernando. Fernando. Reinaldo. Reinaldo. Yes, Reinaldo. Okay, uh, number seven. Yes, number seven. I I need to finish my homework. Ah, good. I need time to finish my homework. It was correct. Okay, Reinaldo, tell me a name. Uh, Patricia. Patricia. Patricia uh, she already participated. Uh, and then uh, Luis Archimedes. Luis Archimedes. Okay. Number eight. I was born on the first day of June. I was born on the first day of June. Good. Okay. Yes. Um. Tell me your name, Luis. Okay. Let me see. Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Hello. Hello. Number nine. Okay. Um. They got use information about the college. Oh, good. They gave us information about the college. Correct. Yes. Elizabeth, tell me a name. Emily. Emily? Did you have a good time on your holiday? Good, nice. Thank you. Emily, give me a name. Um, Evelyn. Evelyn. Yes, teacher. Number 11, 11. yes. Eh, no sé, teacher, me confundí en algunas, pero no sé si saben. Is there sugar in my tea? That's good. It's correct. Is there sugar in my tea? Good. Evelyn, tell me a name. Um, Dina. Dina. Okay. Canada is a big country. Yes, good. Dina, tell me a name. Okay. Ailey? Ailey? Is Ailey here? I think she's not. Another name, Dina? Uh, uh, Lily. Lily. Hello. Hello. Give me a second. Uh, number 14. No, 13. Okay, give me a second. Estoy de mi, desde mi teléfono y tengo que estar cambiando pantalla. Espérenme. We'll give you time. Ah, give me. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, I will meet him in what hour? Okay, I will meet him in an hour. Good, Evelyn, tell me a name. I will give you time, don't worry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I have a question. Tell me, Roberto. I can say I'll meet him in a hour. In that case, no, because of the pronunciation. Because when you pronounce the, uh, the name, the word, you say hour, not hour. Uh, hour. hour. Mm -hmm. If the okay, sound okay. is a, it's a bubble, so you can use uh, just R. In this case, is the sound of the bubble, not the, the consonant. Uh, okay. So, Mm -hmm. Evelyn? Thank you. The name Robert. Robert? Yeah. <laughs> Robert. Which Robert? 14. 14. <coughs> Where can I buy furniture? Okay. Where can I buy furniture? Good, that was correct. Furniture. Roberto, tell me a name. Teacher, what does that mean? Furniture. Furniture. Son como los yeah. muebles. Son los muebles well, que uh, nosotros tenemos en casa. All of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then? Then, It's my entonces. Turn. It's my turn. Oh, tell me a name if you want to say the, <laughs> the, the next sentence. You can read it. She always carries a umbrella with her. She always carries an umbrella. An umbrella. Umbrella. An umbrella with her. Umbrella. Uh -huh, with her <clears throat> an umbrella. Umbrella. Mm -hmm. An umbrella, an umbrella yes. with her. Yes. Okay. She always carries an umbrella with her. Yes, very good. And yes. Roberto, tell me a name for the last one. Mm. Let me see. Let me see. Herbert Gutierrez. Herbert. I just saw a beer. Oh, good. Nice. I just saw a beer. Good. Good, good, good. Now we are going to talk about the other topic that we are supposed to. Um, learn in this session. So, thank you for your participation. You did are really the, good. The number 16 teacher. 10. Yes, it, it was the last one. I just saw a bird. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Easy question. Easy question. An easy question. Okay. Now we are here. So we are going to talk about, let me show you. Adverbs of degree. We are going to talk about adverbs of degree. What are these adverbs and some example of them. So first, adverbs of degree tell us about the intensity of something. Adverbs of degree are usually placed before the adjective adverbs or verb that they modify. Also, there are some exceptions. The words to, very and extremely are examples of adverbs of a degree. Keywords, we are going to write keywords of this information. Vamos a escribir palabras claves, keywords. So, 
it tell us about intensity of something? La intensidad de algo. Another keyword or key um, idea. It usually is the place before before the adjective adverb or verb that they modify before the adjective, the adverb, or the verb, the words to very and extremely Are examples. Okay. These are the key words or main ideas. First, it tells us about intensity of something. Then it usually is placed before the adjective, adverb, or verb that um, that they modify. Then the words to very extremely are examples of adverbs of degree. De esos adverbios eh, decimos, verdad, que nos hablan de la intensidad de algo. Usualmente se escribe o lo encontramos antes del de adjetivo, del de adverbio o del de verbo que está modificando. Las palabras to, very, and extremely son ejemplos de este tipo de adverbios de degree. So, then we have here some examples. Here. Extremely, it's an adjective or modified the adjective. And the example is, the water was extremely cold. El adjetivo eh, es una palabra que nos da más información sobre algo. The adjectives can be colors, can be numbers sometimes, can be um, something that talks about the shape of something the color of the air, the color of the eyes, or something like that. But gave us um, more information about something. So in this case, the adjective is cold. El adjetivo es cold, la palabra cold, frío. Es un adjetivo porque nos da información sobre algo, más información de la que ya tenemos. And then, the extremely, extremadamente frío. The water was extremely cold. El agua estaba extremadamente fría. Quite. That's an adjective. The movie is quite interesting. The movie is quite interesting. La película es un poco interesante. Just. Like a verb. He was just leaving. Está modificando el verbo. He was just leaving. Él se acaba de ir. Podemos decirlo de esa manera. Almost. It's modifying a verb. She has almost finished. She has almost finished. Ella ya casi ha terminado. Very, an adverb. She's running very fast. She's running very fast. Ella está corriendo muy rápido. Then, to, an adverb. You are walking too slowly. You are walking too slowly. Estás caminando muy despacio. And the last one, enough, that is modifying an adverb, 
you are running fast enough. You are running fast enough. Estás corriendo lo suficientemente rápido. So, those are examples of adverb of degree and what kind of word they are modifying. In this case, we have adjective verbs and adverbs. And we have some examples. For this uh, information, I told you before that I will um, upload on the group. So you will have this information in the group tonight because um, today is the last day of this week for the, the session. So I will send you the document to the group because you need to have this information. So don't worry if you need to write something down. So we have the usage of enough. Enough can be used as both an adverb and as a determiner. We have two words that are highlighted, adverb and determiner. What is an adverb and what is a determiner? An adverb is a word that, or a phrase that modifies or qualifies an adjective, verb, or other adverb, or a word group expressing relation of place, time, etc. So, the, uh, la palabra adverbio dice que es una palabra o una frase que modifica o nota la cualidad de un adjetivo, un verbo o de otro adverbio o de un eh, grupo de palabras expresando la relación del lugar, eh, también del tiempo, etc. And we have some examples in the table. How, where, when, how much, and how often. Those words are adverbs. Quietly, peacefully, carefully, slowly, above, abroad, far. They are talking about the places or the time. Um, it gives you information about um, the moment we did or we are going to do something or the way in which we are going to do. So the determiner are, um, are words that function like modifiers. Um, in this case, the determiner is a modifying word that determines the kind of reference a noun or noun group has, for example, uh, the very. In this case, the determiner, we have here the definition. It says a word placed before a noun. Una palabra que se pone antes del nombre to provide information such as quantity, ownership, and specificity. Que nos da información sobre la cantidad, a quien le pertenece, y nos da una, como la, las especificaciones. And we have the examples. Article, demonstratives, possessives, and quantifiers. And the articles, we already know them. Nosotros ya conocemos los artículos. Uh, and the, a dog owns nothing, yet it's seldom dis, dissatisfied. The demonstratives, this, that, this, and those. You can control this dog. Passives. So I have to move this to see the example. Passives. My, your, his, their. How's your guest? And also his dog. Quantifier, few, some, six, no. When two dogs fight over a bone, the third carries it away. So in this case, the determiners um, give you um, information about the quantity, how much, how many, um, the ownership, my uh, notebook, your pen, his, um, bag and all of that words. And also uh, demonstratives telling this one, that one, this 
or those and the articles that we already know. It's almost time to end, but we are going to see something else. In else, uh, we have enough as an adverb because it has some um, characteristics. This one is function like an adverb. Enough as an adverb meaning to the necessary degree. Goes after the adjective or adverb that it is modifying and not before as other adverbs do. It can be used both in positive and in negative sentence. In this case, we are using enough, when we are using it as an adverb, we are going to write it after the adjective or adverb. Si utilizamos enough como un adverbio, no lo vamos a poner al inicio, así como decía la otra regla. This it before. is big enough. Mm -hmm. In this case, we are going to write it after. Lo vamos a escribir después. And we have some examples. Is your coffee hot enough? This box isn't big enough. He didn't work hard enough. I got here early enough. Así lo vamos a escribir después del adjetivo o del adverbio que estamos modificando. Así como aparecen en los ejemplos. Enough is often followed by to plus the infinitive. El infinitivo es la base o la forma base del verbo. And we have some examples. He didn't work hard enough to pass the exam. Ahí nosotros ya tenemos nuestro verbo en forma infinitiva, to has, to drink, to get, Teacher. to sing. Tell me. Uh, I have a question. Tell me. ¿Cuál sería la traducción de enough? Enough, suficiente. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Is your coffee hot enough? ¿Es tu café eh, lo suficientemente caliente? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. So. In this kind of uh, sentence, we have the uh, word enough after the uh, adjective or the adverb using to plus infinity. He didn't work hard enough to pass the exam. Él no trabajó lo suficientemente duro para pasar el examen. Is your coffee hot enough to drink? Eh, tu café está lo suficientemente caliente para beberlo. She's not old enough to get married. Eh, ella no está lo suficientemente vieja para casarse. I got here early enough to sign up. Eh, vine aquí o llegué aquí lo suficientemente temprano para firmar. Enough can also be followed by for someone or for something. Some example, the dress was big enough for me. She is not experienced enough for this job. Is the coffee hot enough for you? He didn't work hard enough for a promotion. También lo podemos escribir seguido por alguien. For me, for you, for him, um, for something. No solo por eh, los verbos en infinitivo, sino también por algo o por alguien. Así como aparece en el ejemplo. So, now it's time to end the session. I will uh, send you this document for review. Tell me, Jacqueline. Excuse me, teacher. I have a question with the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the exercise of the section one and two, but mm -hmm. my progress is not update. Uh, I don't know uh, what happened with my progress. Okay, let me check uh, about the problem because I was uh, reading on the group that some of you have the same problem. Porque y... creo que el problema no, es, no me pasa solo a mí, creo que también reportaron algo parecido. Yes. Entonces creo que hay que esperar hasta mañana, porque yo eso lo vi ya hoy de tarde y pensé que ya no eran mm -hmm. horas hábiles como para que me solucionaran um, el problema. Yes, I think it's better to do it in the morning. 
creo que es un problema de la plataforma. Tal vez no está presentando el progreso, pero sí ustedes están trabajando. Esperemos que el día de mañana tenga el progreso porque um, it's necessary to have the progress for tomorrow. But if you have problems with the platform, you can write in the group again and I will um, contact someone that will uh, answer your questions about the platform and the progress. So don't worry. Okay, teacher. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So thank you for being here. We are going to have the other session on Monday. So have a great weekend and see you on Monday. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. See you Thank Monday. you, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, bye. Good night. Bye. Have a good, good, night. good weekend. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you on Monday. Good night, teacher. Good night.